Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Today we have an international broadcast, Millennial Who Talks, episode number 25. We're coming to you live from Rochester, New York, and Nicaragua. This is episode number 25, and we have Gabriela Castillo. I mean, number one, it's, it's one of the funnest names to say. <laughs> flows right out there, but thanks, thanks for being on the show today, Gabriela. Um, and if you're not familiar with Millennial Who Talks, what we do is we interview real estate rock stars from across the planet now. We get their, <laughs> their real stories just to inspire others, those who are new in the business, new to real estate, and, and the experienced ones as well. So as you're watching this broadcast, if you at any point think you've heard something worthwhile, please share it. Tag people that you know in the comments below. But then you could also subscribe to the show by typing Millennial Who in the comments below. That's Melanie who in the comments below. And my little messenger bots will contact you. You say yes. And I promise I will only let you know when we're doing the show. I'm not going to send you anything else, any spam whatsoever. This is a show that's only designed to help others. We don't sell anything on it. So with that being said, we bringing, bringing you to our featured guest today, Gabriela Castillo. So Let's start with a little introduction. Man, we see that background. Ah, oh, it looks so nice. <laughs> it's, it it's 20 it degrees is. where I am in, in New York. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what's that in the background, and what's the temperature today? I actually don't know what the actual temperature is because it's always somewhere between like 80 and 90. So I don't look at the weather much. And um, we, don't, we don't really check the weather here just because – uh, if it does by chance rain, it's usually like a five to 10 minute shower. So it's not going to ruin anybody's day, so to speak. So we don't check the weather. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> um, but just um, my name is Gabriela Castillo. I'm part of the Remax Coastal Properties team in San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. We are an office that's been open since 2012 officially. A uh, group of about nine agents now, and um, I've been doing real estate since 2008. I've been in the area I am currently in since 2005. I'm Nicaraguan, uh, ethnically and culturally and what have you, but uh, I did live in the States and Canada for quite some time, so it does explain the English, and I am fair-skinned, um, but about 10% of the population is fair-skinned in Nicaragua, so... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I am full, full Nicaraguan, but I'm also Canadian citizenship. And so I'm here by choice. Well, shout out to our neighbors to the North. I'm about as far North as you can get in New York state. So we're right across the lake from Toronto, uh, Canada. So we love our yeah. Canadian friends and it's, it's amazing through the Remax network, how many, you know, it's, we're worldwide, but we're also so close, right? Yes. And, uh, I, feel for you because I lived uh, in Toronto. <laughs> I lived in Toronto for four years. Well, right outside of Toronto in a little area that's now known as a GTA Markham. And uh, I remember the snow. So I feel for you. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit about what took you to Nicaragua or you were in real estate. You got into real estate when you got there, correct? Or shortly yeah. after? So well, what brought you there besides the perfect climate and the beautiful countryside and everything else that's positive about it? Well, um, Nicaragua is my home country, so I have a lot of family here. I have a lot of family scattered, actually, in a lot of places, but, you know, the cradle, so to speak, is Nicaragua. And um, it, there were some family issues and what have you, so I left Canada, came back to Nicaragua, you know, you hurry back to take care of family. And uh, while I was here, I decided to go to school. And we actually have a university here that's based out of the U.S. It's now based out of Florida. It's called Kaiser. Um, okay. When I studied there, it was a different university based out of Mobile, Alabama. Um, but it's a U.S.-based university, so my degree is actually stamped and sealed in the U.S. And I got all the benefits of living in Nicaragua at a much lower cost. But getting my degree from the U.S., in global business and finance. And uh, after that, I worked at 
some office in Manawa outsourcing and what have you, which is the capital, sorry. And um, and then I was actually like, I kind of like hit that glass ceiling and I, w- and I was like, okay, what am I going to do here in Nicaragua? Am I going to stay here? Should I go back to Canada? What's my next move and what have you? And a friend of mine said, because I'm, I'm from the second largest city in Nicaragua, which is León. And at the time I was working in Manawa. Okay. And uh, when I decided that I was going to be going back to Canada, a friend of mine said, um, you know, you, you, why don't you come to San Juan del Sur and uh, work with me for a couple of weeks before you leave because I need some help and, uh, you know, you'll have a good time. I said, what could go wrong? Perfect. You know, I, I had been in San Juan del Sur during my college years because um, I used to come here for, you know, skipping school and having a good time at the beach. <laughs> so um, I decided to come down. I was only supposed to be here for about four weeks. Four to six weeks is what, what my initial commitment was. And, you know, we hit it off. It was great. Um, I decided to stay. I was there for about two years. And so that was between 2005 and 2007. Um, I started dating my now husband and the real estate here was going insane. Um, I was working at an eco lodge, which is really, really gorgeous. It's named Morgan's Rock. And um, my boyfriend was doing amazing in real estate. And he's from the U.S. And okay. he came down here with a Peace Corps, fell in love with the country, and decided to stay. And we met after he had finished his Peace Corps volunteer uh, tour. And um, But he still had, like, a whole bunch of gaps in terms of culture or different things and what have you. So he would constantly ask me questions. And so I was kind of, like, brought into real estate naturally, Um it kind of just fell on my lap. I didn't really plan on doing anything like that. And it was just like the natural, organic next step. So initially you were just a sales agent, right? I mean, well, actually, you know, initially. Yeah, let's talk about the beginning. In the beginning, there was Gabriella, in, the new real estate agent. Who fell in, the be- <laughs> in the beginning, there was um, Gabriela, the person who was helping everybody do real estate. <laughs> And uh, so um, I didn't want to step on anybody's toes because it's a very tight knit community here. And I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. So I started my first real estate venture as a property manager slash vacation rental manager, which which was exactly what I was already doing. I was already answering everybody's questions about how to get here, what to do, how to have a great time, how to make sure their houses were well taken care of, um, you know, and essentially there's. There's ho- boutique hotels here, but there's no, um, what you call like landmark hotels, like, you know, Hyatt or yeah. all that kind of stuff. So the growth here has been very organic and it's been based off of like VRBO, Airbnb, and everybody who wants to have their own little piece of paradise and wants to have an ROI and people who want to visit here and see what it's like and you can't find the Marriott's you can't find any of those other things so uh, we ended up having to actually make it happen and people started just buying plots of land uh, building their dream houses and then since they couldn't move here right away renting it out and so that's what we've been doing and now we have more than 300 houses available for rent in the area. I don't mm-hmm. manage them all. I have gotten out of management quite a bit since. <laughs> um, and it's just been incredible because the big name brands haven't come in. So there's a lot of money to be made in rental income. So let, let me just bring up a photo here. So you guys can see what she's talking about. So here, here's where you live, right? This is where you are right now. Is that right? Yeah. That is correct. So um, in that picture, right smack dab in the middle, if you just move a little bit to the to the left, you see like a, whole, a cluster of homes on the beach there. Well, you see that beach right back there? Oh, my gosh. That, that's the same beach. So, 
So that's where I live. I yeah. don't know if you made a, a lot of friends or frenemies, we might say. <laughs> They're like, I love her, but I hate her because we're right now. That is truly paradise. So talk a little bit about that, that vacation rental. Is it pretty much you could have it fully occupied year round? Like what, when does the, when is your, your busiest seasons? You know, like tell us a little bit about that because it's different here, like here in Rochester, April through October is a busy uh, vacation rental time because that's when we have warm weather. You guys, I would think would might, might be year round or what's <laughs> our, yeah, it's been incredible to see everything happen before my eyes. When I, first moved here in 2005 the town essentially basically went to sleep for about two months out of the year Uh, you know late late September till early November the town basically like closed down Um, it doesn't any longer Uh, the only semi slow seasons that we can if we could call them that are the months of May in October, but not even now. I mean, we get we get all the snowbirds between November and March, right? <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, we get all the summer vacation, like family adventure people, between the months of June and August. And in between those two big major times, we get a lot of really random groups of people coming through. Um, we get tons of people from israel we get a yeah like they travel in packs <laughs> yeah it's incredible they come through they love the area we ca- we have a house uh casa de chabad so they have a place for worship and what have you we have a ton of backpackers that are just traveling through central america like australians and new zealanders uh we have a ton of people from europe that are also traveling through uh, Central America, um, whether it's people who are just taking a month off and doing some kind of a sabbatical to people who are taking a whole year off and just looking to relocate and kind of find themselves again. Uh, recently, San Juan del Sur has become a hub for like the nomad lifestyle. Um, so tons of houses here that uh, cater to the nomad ha- lifestyle, the nomad lifestyle. Um, and then it, we don't really have a slow season anymore. It's it's really a city now. It's no longer just a little like Resort. fishing town. Yeah. Uh, so we, yeah. And I I rent I have houses that I still work with that I've worked with since 2008. And our occupancy rates on a bad year are about 60 to 70 percent, and on a good year as high as 90 percent. And that's just because we have to block out times for maintenance and what have you. So and homeowner use, <laughs> yeah. I can hear your Canadian accent coming through a little bit when you say house. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the other words. Uh, but <laughs> let me ask you this because we like to talk, you know, real talk here. What were some of the challenges when you got into real estate or in your country when it comes to real estate that you've overcome throughout the years since you started? A major, major, major one has been exclusive listings. Okay. Um, when we first started real estate, anybody that you would ask um, for exclusivity in your listing was essentially impossible. Nobody would give you exclusivity. They're like, oh, no, no, no. In Nicaragua, that's not the way it works. Um, you know, I have to have a bigger audience and what have you. And there's no way I'm giving you exclusivity because if I'm giving you exclusivity, you're the only person I'm working with and I want to work with everybody. how do you handle that what's that conversation like well it's it's a little different because you guys all use um an mls and you have uh an active real estate chamber and what have you and you have all of these tools that kind of help you say no 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 you know um for us the conversation still is a little more different because in order for us to prove that uh, we deserve exclusivity. We have to provide results. Um, we have to provide stats. We have to show people all of the work that we really do do. Like we invest in professional photography. We invest in videos. 
we invest in marketing materials to actually promote. And when I say marketing materials, I'm talking about everything that has to do with ads and a whole bunch of other things to actually make the house sell. So thankfully, we have we've gotten a really great track record and things are actually starting to change because Rem as Remax in 2012 we really did uh, introduce exclusive listings and it was extremely difficult uh, without stats, without a proven record, so to speak. Um, but thankfully, our team is top notch, like the agents are top producers um, and, you know, really the whole team, everybody is just incredible with actually doing a great job of actually promoting homes and selling them. So... We actually now have to turn people away that for areas that we don't cover. So we are looking for more people to open offices in the rest of Nicaragua because we need to be able to refer them. Um, so we're currently the only Remax office in Nicaragua. So if you have questions, call me. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you're a, a Remax broker or a broker anywhere in the world and you're thinking about expanding somewhere into the Nicaraguan area, I think you need to contact Gabriela. Because there's definitely a need there. She's looking for people to refer business to, right? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, got me some really great photos here, but what about the folks that have heard that Nicaragua maybe isn't so safe and they haven't been there because of that? What What do you have to say to those folks? Um, check with the stats for the World Bank. Uh, if you check with stats that are unbiased. Uh, you'll see that Nicaragua is actually the safest country in Central America. Um, we have an incredible police uh, group. Our government has done an incredible job of keeping all of the all of the violence and what have you that happens further north between Mexico and the rest of the countries further north. Uh, we have like there's international organizations doing studies in Nicaragua on how a country with the smallest GDP in Central America, uh, with the, you know, with, with everything, how it is that we've been able to keep the violence out and keep everything out of Nicaragua. And it comes down to community, really. Um, everything, all of this comes down to a tight-knit community. Uh, we all watch out for each other. Um, we have a saying in Spanish that says, hoy por ti, mañana por mí. Today for you, tomorrow for me. So um, we are, you know, I think it's the poverty or like the financial poverty or, or the customs or I don't know what it is. But that saying is so true in Nicaragua. Like we all look out for each other. We all want the best for each other. And if we all see something funky then Rumorville is, is really quick to catch wind and things are stopped. Like I have all kinds of crazy stories about when I used to live in, San, in Leon, how we found there was this new family that moved in about three blocks from where I lived. And they were revamping this old house that was huge and gorgeous, but it had been abandoned for a whole bunch of time. And everybody was like, oh, you know, these people are moving in. They're foreigners. How great. Yeah, look at all the upgrades they're bringing in. It was the first time anybody in Nicaragua saw a flat screen TV. You know, it was like all of this stuff. So it was like Rumorville was crazy. So a lot of people started saying, I want to get into business with them. I want to see what it is that they're doing, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And that's how everybody found out that they were narco traffickers. Wow. And so everybody started reporting them. And a couple months later, you saw the police raid their place. And that was it. Took care of business. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell us some of the fun facts here? I'm going to bring it back up on the on the screen here, if you can see that. What sure. if I told you? Uh -huh. There's some fun facts here that that a lot of people may not know, and may cause them to come and invest in Nicaragua, right? That is true. Um, you know, people think Nicaragua is a tiny country that doesn't have much going for it or what have you, because unfortunately most of the press that Nicaragua has received has been about poverty, war, and crime. Um, 
and and when I mean you know so it's you see at CNN always puts up a clip about Nicaragua civil unrest what have you and that's just maybe people that are you know doing some protesting something on one of the blocks in in Manawa and right. all of us who lived in Manawa at that time you know whenever we saw that happening we would just take a different route and ignore the situation because life goes on and we're not right. participating in any of that so um we would just it really didn't mean it. we're like oh great cnn is giving us coverage for this and we're all ignoring it you know whatever so it was really really in, insane that that's the only coverage we receive but really what i what i when i try to talk about Nicaragua I try to almost scream at the rooftops you know like we're the biggest country in Central America and we have Caribbean coasts and we have Pacific coasts with amazing surf and we have islands with these insane picturesque white sands and blue waters just like you see in the rest of Caribbean and we some... have yeah we What's have is that, is that your pool that we're looking at no that's not my particular pool that's a pool actually in a six-star resort in a cluster that's just a small pool that belongs to a cluster of homes in a six-star resort that has um you know a, a development area as well it's called Wakalito de la isla it's insane it's gorgeous yeah let me just scroll through these quickly take a moment here and there's another that's, picture right that's where that's i live where that's right the, the angle that you can see my house that's just a couple of uh, that's a that's a couple of bays south of where I live as well. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, here's the coastline. Oh, I love this picture. <laughs> I love it too. It's taken by my good friend Corey. Um, yeah, that is what you see all day long here. I mean, you go to any of the beaches in this area of San Juan del Sur, and you will see that. That is a common view. And, uh, you know, it's sad to see that people don't know about it. And that's uh, that's uh, just a little bit uh, south of us as well. It's a gorgeous beach area. And that, that, that area is for sale. <laughs> um, <laughs> this could um, all be yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, it's. It's important for for people to know that that our GDP is strong. It is growing. Um, it used to be really well known for everything that has to do with uh, agriculture, and now tourism is a quick, quick growing section. Um, that's one of the two main uh, volcanoes on Lake Nicaragua, which is named uh, Cosibolca, and the island is named Ometepe, and that's one of the picturesque fairies that go there on a daily basis by the hour. Um, so it's, it's that, gorgeous. It's not active, right? It is active. One is active, one oh. is not. Okay. But active means that there's lava in it and okay. there's an open crater and what have you. Um, right. But it doesn't mean that it's a, that it's a, you know, erupting. <laughs> Okay, okay. So I'm sure, I'm sure people that are watching are wondering, like, oh, my goodness, that seems like a little scary. But People man, hike amazing. up. People take really? hiking tours all the way up these volcanoes every day. Yeah. That sounds exciting. <laughs> it is. It's a little much for me. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit much for me to go up to these volcanoes because I'm just um, – I've been there, done that, so to speak. You know? right, right. <laughs> but there was this crazy marathon last week that had, um, it's called Fuego Yagua. And uh, they do like 20 and 50 and 100 kilometer races of people people who just train for months and months on end to do these. It's kind of like an obstacle course slash yeah. uh, marathon. The, and fun. they go all around. Uh, one of our one of our agents' wives, her name is Heather, did it last week, and we're super proud of her. She was the sixth one to finish, and she looks so tired. <laughs> That's amazing. So let, let's talk a little bit about now. You you're, you're involved with like the, the leadership of your country or the tourism. Tell me, like, 
and you've started to implement video to help promote that. And what we'll do is you sent me a video, we'll, we'll post it in the comments below when we're done with the broadcast so they can see a little bit about it. Um, tell us how that's helped, right? Because I think there was a certain point where you weren't, the tourism wasn't as, as doing as well as it is today and you've helped to kind of raise awareness and, and bring new people into your country. Tell us about that. Well, I, it's, it's been a lot, it's been a big process growing. Um, and I, I can't take credit for it, but it's been the whole real estate sector that's involved with tourism. That's done an amazing job of promoting the country to their spheres of influence in other parts of the world. And, um, you know, we've had, we have articles all the time from the New York Post or Travel and Leisure or, you know, CNN Travel or what have you. And we have all of these incredible articles that come out about Nicaragua, promoting Nicaragua. And with the reset, when we had a crazy real estate boom in 2006, six seven, that obviously kind of went for a dud in, during the recession, um, and we can come back and talk about that, but the recession didn't really hit us as hard as it did a lots of other places. And we can talk a little bit more about that afterwards. But um, the real estate industry has really, really like, and, and obviously my team has specialized in this. We really focus on getting incredible images of Nicaragua, posting them in, in the different forms of, of uh, social media that we have access to and uh, try and give people a different glimpse of Nicaragua. Um, we also right. write all kinds of like blogs and what have you. The thing mm -hmm. is, it didn't matter. It was like a whole bunch of print, a whole bunch of images, a whole bunch of things. But a lot of people didn't really, I don't know, believe us or think it was true or, you know, like they're seeing conflicting information or what have you. And it wasn't right. until we started, I personally started doing live video after I did this incredible little boot camp thing that was done by uh, Jesse Peters and Michael Thorne. You can look, in the, look them up. It's called uh, Video Boot Camp, uh, exclusive to Remax agents. And um, they kind of opened my eyes and said, you can do this. You can do video. It doesn't have to be professional. You know, and so I, I just started doing live videos and covering things that I thought were pertinent to my area and that I thought were interesting. So um, I've gotten so many views on those little videos. It's crazy. And it really does change people's perspective of Nicaragua um, because the video, it makes people feel like they know you and they can trust you more so it gives you that like warm touch uh, mm -hmm. and when you have the live video you can also interact with people directly because you can see the questions that they're asking uh, and answer right away and uh, it's been transforming for sure um, wow I like that word transforming <laughs> So, I mean, let, let's say this for those who are watching right now, and, and we, we talked before we, we went on uh, on live about being nervous. And now, even though you're experienced with live video, and I'm, I've been doing like live video for a long time myself, tell them how you feel before every single time that you do a live video or live mm -hmm. broadcast. It's nerve wracking every <laughs> single time. <laughs> It's nerve wracking absolutely every single time and every single time that, you know, my, my heart is saying, no, 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 don't do this. Cause it's like jumping out of my, my chest. Um, but I, I know the impact it'll have on, on my business and my area and my, my country. So uh, it's like my mind is saying yes, my heart is saying no, my hands are shaking. And uh, the only thing I can really re make it relatable to is um, like when you were a little kid and you were learning how to swim and you were told to jump into the pool for the first time by yourself without floaties, you know, Fingers that kind of like sheer nervousness that you get. <laughs> like, <gasps> And then 
your feet, you know, you tell your feet to just jump and you do it. You get goosebumps on your goosebumps. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that was a pretty good description, man. It's just like... <laughs> So That's exactly how I feel every time. For those of you who are watching and, and like, you know, you're scared. You're scared to do live video or video in general. Like we're all scared. We're all scared. No matter how many times you do it, you're always nervous. But just what did you say? Don't let your mind get in the way of what your body's telling you to do or vice, vice versa. Something um, to just that effect. Just do it. Just, Something do, to it. That effect. just yeah. do it. Make your dreams come true. So what else do you want to, any advice, you know, for, for somebody who's newer in the business or somebody who's looking to, maybe if they sell in a resort community similar to yours, what, what kind of best practices would you give them if I was like a new agent, somebody just starting, I live in this paradise like you live in, or, or I'm, I'm just going to move there. I'm going to move and plan to go there for four to six weeks and then stay for the rest of my life. You know, <laughs> what kind of advice would you give us? Document. Um document the process of everything from the moment you decide and make little video clips like I've decided to move to Nicaragua and I'm going to go for it and I'm super nervous and I can't believe I'm thinking about this you know document all those little things all of those little videos those little you know it doesn't matter what your background is it doesn't matter what um how you look or what have you the important is that you document the emotion and document the thought process of it all and the steps um and then if you're feeling comfortable enough with it which i hope you do is start sharing your the process of of your decision making process and everything of all the steps you need to take to get ready to move um once you actually arrive uh you know document the houses that you're moving into even if you switch houses multiple times just document the reasons why um, people will follow you because, believe it or not, a lot of people that that you're interacting with are watching. And uh, the more that you document the process, the more interesting it'll be. Um, and whatever surprises you, you know, make note of it. Like, I know people that come down here, the first thing they ask for is avocados. Like, where can I get avocados? You know, document where you get your avocados. And, like... It wasn't up until recently that you could you could almost not even buy avocados because everybody just went to the trees, you know, like right, everybody, right. like I have in in all in almost every house I've lived in, we've had an avocado tree and an and a mango tree in our backyard. So getting purchased produce was not easy <laughs> up until recently that there's demand for it because the foreigners want it, and um. If you want to move down, if you want to move to another area, um, there's a lot of people who are looking to move to anywhere. And if you document your process and share it with them and be like generous with the information that you learn, um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how many people you pull with you, <laughs> you know, like how many people will follow you. Right. Uh, those little things are important. It's the little mundane things that people really want to know most. Yeah, it, it's the little things, the details that, just like you said, something as little as, like, where can I get the avocados? I want to make me some guac. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> like, I can't find them. Yeah, little things like that, because, we you know, we live in a world where all we do is Google everything. So if you could create those little nuggets of information that somebody might Google, that's definitely going to help them throughout the process. And you too could be seen as an expert in your area, much like Gabriela Castillo. That is correct. I could say that name all day. It's like so much fun. <laughs> uh, so in, in closing, is there anything else you want to add? Um, you know, in, in real estate here, you're going to, in, in anywhere, you're going to find obstacles. You're going to find things that are going to give you a reason to say no all the time. Like, oh, I want to do this, but I can't because, you know, whatever that is. Um, you're going to find a way to deny yourself the chance to live the dream life you want. And 
uh, you've got to have an open mind, uh, have an open mind to new horizons, to new things, to trying things and failing. It's okay to fail. Um, and even some failures end up being successes in the long run because uh, you know, I mean, you can giggle about it and tell stories about it afterwards or what have you. There's always something positive that comes from every action that you do as long as your action comes from a good place. And uh, just go for it. Try something new. Do do things well. Try new horizons. Don't be afraid to tour the world. Don't be afraid to taste new foods. Um you might be surprised how much you like it. All right. Well, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your day and sharing just, just a little bit of your story with us. So you heard it here from Gabriela. Don't be afraid, you know, to take on new challenges, visit new areas, try new foods. I mean, she, look where she lives right now. And it started out with going for a four to six week vacation. <laughs> yeah. You know? And the rest is history. So, again, if, if you're watching this and you found anything worthwhile and you learned something, please just, in the, in the comments below, type Millennia Who and you can subscribe to the broadcast. But please do some, some hearts, some love, some fireworks, we call it, for Gabriela Castillo, our first international guest on the show, uh, compliments of the REMAX Network. And it, it's just a testament to the, to the network that we're a part of that there's just – people from across the world that are willing to help one another. So if you are thinking of investing somewhere, you're looking for a good return, contact Gabriela, contact myself. I'll get you her information, but we're going to tag her company in the comments below. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing day. You know, we, we had people watching from London, from New York, from all over. So we've gone, world, yes. we've, gone world, <laughs> we've gone worldwide today and we. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Jeremiah. You're welcome.